everybody, this is Anne. I purchased this kiln over two years ago and it's finally time to change out the elements. Before I get started, I wanted to let you know that this video is not intended to be a how-to. My hope is that this content is empowering to those who may be intimidated to own and or service their own kiln by demonstrating that these tasks can be accomplished by most people, like me, with limited mechanical and technical skill. I hope you enjoy it. These are thermocouples. The thermocouples measure the temperature of the kiln and are hidden inside of these protruding white capsule things that you see inside the kiln. Here's a new thermocouple. They're very sensitive and I'm careful not to touch the ends. Here's the old one from my kiln. As you can see, it's almost corroded through. Here's what the new elements look like. I compared them to the elements in my kiln and it wasn't difficult to see how worn the old elements had become. What I really wanted to inspect were the coils in the corners of the element holders. As they age, the coils bunch up, begin to sag, and then lay down. This disrupts the flow of energy to where the heat's not evenly distributed around the kiln any longer. Eventually they become so brittle that they break. Before I did any work to the kiln, I made sure to unplug it. I also found the owner's manual. This manual had all the pertinent information about the kiln on the back, so I could order the correct parts. Plus it contained the instructions with a list of the tools that I needed to do the maintenance. I called the very helpful tech support at l, &L Kiln and ordered the correctly sized elements and thermocouples for this specific model. Here's what they look like. The coils are very evenly spaced with long tails on the ends. Before starting the installation, the instructions suggest that I inspect the elements to make sure there's no crimping or damage. First, I unscrewed the panel from the kiln casing with a Phillips head screwdriver. I was careful not to open it too wide as the wires from the thermocouple were connected from the kiln to the panel and I didn't want to break them. Since I don't do this very often, I don't want to take a chance that I'll forget the order of all the hardware and the wires, so I took a picture of everything before taking it apart. In order for me to fully open the panel, I simply loosened the screws holding the wires in place and then pulled them out. Once the panel was fully opened, I got a better look at how everything was arranged. Here's where the thermocouples will go. And here's where the ends of the elements will be tethered. To remove the thermocouples, I just needed to unscrew the two screws holding it in place. As there were three ceramic spacers attached to the screw, I had to be careful that they did not fall and break when the screw was removed. To keep all the hardware straight, I took a piece of tape and folded it sticky side up to a kiln stilt. This way I can stick them to the tape in order that I removed them. I slowly pulled the old thermocouple from the sleeve so it didn't break inside of it. I could see that the end had already started to crack. Now I could take the new thermocouple and gently push it into the case, trying not to break it. I replaced the screws with the spacers on them on the top and the bottom. And then I tightened them up. Okay. 
My kiln has two thermocouples, so I repeated the same process to the second one. I checked the photo I took earlier to make sure I had the placement just right. Now on to the elements. I began by unscrewing the hardware that was attached at each terminal. Again I used the sticky tape to keep all the screws and nuts in order. With pliers, I loosened the ends of the elements. The instructions said that I needed to straighten the tails and snip off the bent part so I could slide it back through the holes and remove the elements. From the inside of the kiln, I used needle nose pliers to grip the wires and gently pull the ends through. Then I pulled the rest of the elements out of their ceramic holders. I talked to tech support and they told me the way to know when to replace the elements is to keep track of the number of firings you've done. I fired a cone 5 so I can expect somewhere around 50 high firings from the elements before they start to fail. After I removed the element, I cleaned out the debris that was in the holder, as the manual recommended. I used a brush to get it out, and then a damp cloth to clean up the debris that was dislodged. Once it was all cleaned up, I pushed the long tails all the way through the small holes. The instructions said the element coils were pre-stretched to fit the kiln, but when I tried to fit them to the inside, I had to take them back out and stretch them out a bit more before they would stay in the holders. I repeated the same steps for the element under the first one. Since they're connected to the same terminal, I had to replace both of them together. Next I had to deal with the ends. I knew that they had to bend down and around the terminal, but I didn't want to put too much stress on the ceramic block when bending. So I used the needle nose pliers to hold the wire away from the block while I bend it downward. I then wrapped the wire around the terminal. I was careful to wrap it in the same direction as the screw will be turning, so it'll tighten to the bolt. I used pliers to get a really good connection between the two. I had to wrap the tail from the second element to the same terminal, just like I did with the first one. Then I replaced the rest of the hardware. Once both ends were tightened down securely, I snipped off the ends using heavy-duty wire cutters. I repeated this process with the other two element ends, making sure to connect the electrical connectors and the hardware in the order that they were before. I repeated this process for the two remaining elements at the bottom of the kiln. 
I then reattach the wires to the thermocouple, then close the panel back up. Here's what it looks like now. These new elements and thermocouples should give me a much more efficient firing. If you like our video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio!